Okay, looks like my computer's behaving again. We'll see if the my bamboo notepad is working. All right, so what um, what Sean just worked on the board there was the solution. I think I might still have a copy of it sitting here, hopefully. Uh, okay, fine. Okay, so where, where we were, we were sh showing that power is, in fact, energy divided by time. The units we use for, for energy are joules, units we use for time are seconds, and uh, units we use for power are watts. We know that a joule is a watt second, and this is going to come in handy uh, when you think about electricity. So when you, when you get your electric bill, it's kilowatt hours. It's the same exact thing. So um, you can think of, of uh, in, in, in kilowatt hours, that little uh, multiplication is implied. Yeah, this thing still isn't working. I'm going to have to reboot. But um, you can see that the power times the time equals energy. Same exact notion as energy divided by time is power. So another way to write it is P equals E divided by T. This is the equation that we just did, and for completeness, I showed canceling the units in, in the equation I'm using here. I used all the significant digits, converting 2,500 calories to joules, and came up with 121 joules per second, which uh, is, is the same as 121 watts. And if my, if my marker, oh, there it goes. Well, hang on. <laughs> now the pen's still not working, though. Okay, so just equals um, one. 21 watts. And I think, as we just said, that's surprisingly low. And if, and if it weren't for the fact that um, we were sort of walking around on these two inverted pendulums, our, our legs, uh, we, we wouldn't be as efficient either. I mean, it, it's, you know, the, the human body has really evolved to be a very, uh, very efficient organism, both for mobility and, as well as, as thinking, as I just mentioned. Okay, so that's um, something to keep in mind. Uh, while we're on this topic, though, does anybody remember what the um, <clears throat> human technological budget is? So again, this is kind of review from 101. Human technological budget. Global consumption. Yeah. Okay. I'll throw it out there. It's it's 500 exajoules per year. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go through this thing kind of quickly. But this is again this is pretty this is fundamental to this course and something that we kind of need to um, need need to think about. So 500 exajoules per year. I'm now gonna pop this into Microsoft Excel and figure out how many, um, how many joules per person per day. So I'm going to go from all of humanity's energy budget per year, I'm going to drop into Microsoft Excel and show this in terms of joules per person per day. So I'm going to do a couple different unit conversions. I wish my pad were working, but I'll just drop into Excel. It's the next best thing. And I'll show you a couple little tricks, too, for manipulating things in Microsoft Excel. This will come in handy when we get into Summary 3. Okay. So um, I'll put uh, total human uh, technological energy. And the polite thing to do is to put this in, um, put the units, exajoules per year. I'm putting that out there as well. I just double click there so that the uh, cell would be the right, right dimensions. Total human energy per year. Uh, 500. Exajoules is 10 to the 18th. And 
so actually, you know what? I'm going I'm to put this. I always make this mistake. I, I end up running in uh, columns instead of rows. But let's let's run it this way. So now let's just uh, total human energy, and let's just put that in joules per year. So what do I do to get from exajoules to joules? 10 to the 18th. So the way to do that is um, I just clipped on C3 times 1 E18. That's the quickest way to put 10 to the 18th. So C3 times 1 E18. E just means exponential. There it is. So my Microsoft Excel put that in scientific notation. I guess while we're on it, let's play around a little bit here. Um, copy, paste. Why'd that number get so big on me? It's a relative reference, and I need an absolute reference. So I'm going to double click on it, drag that thing up there, and now it's back to where I wanted it. Okay, so I'm going to take this scientific number and I'm going to put it into engineering units. So to do that in Excel, I think if I do a Control-1, Control-1 is going to bring up the formatting for me. And I think it's down here under Special. If not, it's under Custom. Okay, so if we dig down in here, I think it's going to be... So see the hash mark, hash mark? It, what that means I'm going to get either one, two, or three digits to the left of the decimal point. There we go. So that's a little, that's a little handier. The difference between scientific notation and engineering notation is that scientific, you'll just have that one digit to the, to the left. Engineering notation, everything's going to be in, in powers of three, multiples of three. So there you are through 10 to the 18. Okay. Now, uh, number of humans, I'm just going to round them up, 7 E9, 7 billion humans. Uh, so this is going to be uh, energy per person per year, and now the units are going to be, let's just, let's just keep it in um, exajoules for now, keep it simple. Uh, so that equals total energy divided by total people, I think. Okay, so that's still in, uh, oh, actually, sorry, that's in joules. It's in joules. So do yourself a favor and, you know, keep, keep the units listed as, as you move down. 71 E9, so 71 gigajoules. Now let's do energy per person per day. Let's also put that in joules. Equals that number divided by 365. So that's joules. <clears throat> let's do it again. Copy, paste. But now let's put that in megajoules. Um, equals that. What am I going to divide by? Or multiply by? Yeah, 1E6, divide by a million, so 1E6, dink, okay, and I'll control 1 on that, and let's just put that as a, as a number. Okay, so 200 megajoules per day. How does that compare to, and this is, this is technological, how does that compare to metabolic? Just figured that out, so let's put that number in here, megajoules, 10. So here's the, here's the term I like to, like to call it. I just like to call it uh, techno-slaves. We don't, we, don't we don't have slaves so much anymore. I mean, some people might argue that they're you know, uh, working for slave labor wages, but it, it's our technology doing the work for us. So just, you know, you know, our, our cars, our planes, our power plants, our computers. Uh, so it's just, 
that number divided by that number. So the average person on the planet has 20 technological slaves working for him or her 24-7. Now, what we would, I, I think what we would like to do with this whole renewable energy, sustainable energy uh, format is figure out how to, how to maintain the same quality of life but bring that number of technological slaves under control because remember, these 500 exajoules, where does that energy go? What, what happens to it? You know, first law, conservation of, of energy, you cannot create or destroy it, that or matter. We're, it just turns into heat. I mean, heat, heat is sort of the, the graveyard of, of energy, if you will. So all 500 of those exajoules just, just convert into heat, in the, in the paper we read in 101, that amount of heat translates into one degree, or 0.1 degrees Celsius rise in the atmosphere per year, if it all stayed in the atmosphere. Obviously, some of it is radiated, uh, some of it's absorbed by the ground, some by the ocean, but heat's the graveyard for energy. It's gotta go somewhere, where does it go? It goes in the atmosphere, et cetera, et cetera. So if we can you know, bring that um, techno-slave ratio down a little bit, I think it's for the better. Okay, so that's, that's where I wanted to go with this first lecture, just so we can start talking megajoules, human power, techno power. It's just good to kind of keep all of that in the back of your mind, because that's really what the, the, rest of the rest of the course is about. Okay, so hopefully that one's saved. I, th I think the other one's saved as well. So this is the second little...